Hey there, let's talk about email list building strategies to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Hornell from here with Supersize Business. And this is one of those strategies that I find it interesting that I still need to coach people on and talk about or a group of strategies or the whole topic of email marketing. There are still literally millions of companies out there that do not take advantage of the power of email marketing to supersize and grow their business. Email marketing is one of the fastest, easiest, least expensive, automatable, flexible ways to communicate with your customers and potential 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 customers on the planet because it's so inexpensive it's easy to use there's a gazillion tools now and I don't know that a gazillion is a technical term there are a lot of tools out there to make it fast easy automatic etc so let's talk about some of these strategies do we need to talk about the importance of having an email list and the power of having an email list I hope not if you need to talk about that contact me, message me below, and we'll have like a two-minute chat about it, and I will tell you the power that email marketing has brought into my life and my businesses and that of the clients and customers that I serve. Uh, we literally have thousands of email campaigns going on right now on autopilot for businesses in just about every industry you can imagine. So, Email list building strategies. What are they? Number one, as always, I say you got to understand your audience. You have to know who you're writing to, who you're communicating with, who your ideal people to serve are, because they're the ones that you want to write to. A secret about the whole ideal audience thing that I think a lot of people forget or ignore or want to avoid is the fact that your ideal client, your ideal customer is probably a past version of you. I know mind-boggling to think that you serve people that you used to be. I know it's weird, but it's so true. If you can tap into that, you automatically understand the language, the problems, the pain points, et cetera, of the customer. And you know how to talk to them. Uh, second strategy is, of course, to create compelling lead magnets. You have to offer people something in exchange for their email. They're not going to just give you their email nowadays, although almost everybody and everything under the sun requires your email to even talk to their customer service or to communicate with them or to even look at their products and services at all uh, because they've understood that getting someone's email means that they were interested enough to give something of great value to them to you in exchange for information or whatever it might be there are literally you are literally limited only by your imagination when it comes to what kind of lead magnets you can create and the vast majority of them can be delivered for virtually nothing virtually through the internet uh I, again we've created literally at least a thousand different lead magnets 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 lead magnets boy my tongue isn't working today i guess i need more caffeine lead magnets that we have used and tested and tweaked and changed to find out what speaks directly to our ideal clients and customers. We want to optimize our sign-in form. Our sign-up form, and we've tested this extensively, it's got to be simple. It has to be quick, easy. It's got to work every time uh, and immediately. The less information you ask for, the more likely people are to sign up. If you ask for a first name and email, you're going to get a certain percentage of signups. If you ask just for the email, you'll get a certain percentage of signups, but you're giving up the ability to personalize your emails, which is another strategy that's very important down the list a little bit here. Uh, so it's up to you to decide what's most important and what you want to get. Maybe early on, you would start not customizing it, but then add that later. I say you start right off the bat. First name, email, first name, email, first name, email, and make the form super simple. Let them know what they're going to get. Make it easy and compelling for them to click that button to join your email list. Uh, so we want to optimize that sign up form. And it's got to be quick, easy to use. Don't put a bunch of automation and graphics on it so it takes forever to load. It also has to be mobile friendly. I don't even know if I put that on my list because now... I, I just automatically think in terms of mobile. It's got to look good on a mobile phone. It's got to work on a mobile phone. It's got to be accessible and readable on a mobile phone so that people can, can just do it and move on. Uh, again, the psychology of signing up for something, buying a book, thinking that you've solved your problem just because you've made a purchase, even though you've never even gotten your purchase, uh, there's, that's a huge driving factor in human behavior. So why would we not want to use that in our favor? Uh, 
again, oh, next is personalize your, your email sequences and personalize your email to people. People don't want to feel like they're just one of a group, right? They want to feel like you are speaking directly to them and communicating directly to them and that you actually care about them. It helps if you actually care about your customers and you want to use their name and you want to get to know them. You're not going to get to know all of them probably, but you want to get to know at least a thousand of them, right? A thousand fans, a thousand uh, fans can make the difference between uh, super success and failure. Uh, we want to craft engaging subject lines. There's been a ton of tests and we've done it in my organizations as well of testing subject lines. Subject lines are critical. It's like the headline on your website. It's like the headline on your articles it is the headline in the newspaper. It's the most important thing. It gets people's attention. It grabs them. It hooks them. It gets them to go to your website, click on your thing, sign up for the box, etc. If you don't get their attention, there are so many things vying for our attention nowadays, then you've lost them. At least you've lost them until you come back around again with a different offer for them that might get their attention. So craft uh, engaging and interesting and curiosity-based subject lines. And again, that's something that we test all the time. Implement email automation. Like I said, I don't know why you wouldn't automate your sequences. You, you create them, you test them. The ones that work, you automate. The ones that don't, you fix until you can automate them. And there's so much automation available. Uh, and you can automate to different target audiences, different groups. You can segregate your uh, email list. There's all kinds of really fun, crazy things you can do now. We want to leverage social proof. People need social proof. They need to know that somebody besides you thinks you're awesome. And so you do that through testimonials, through referrals, through uh, incentive programs and things to help people find out about you. Advertising, of course, is an option as well. Uh, you want to encourage referrals. Referrals, I still say word of mouth and referrals are like gold. If you can get them, that's your best opportunity to reach another customer and positively impact the world. And then finally, oh, not finally, but we want to analyze and optimize our campaigns. We want to test, test, test everything. Uh, I have a scientific background and engineering background, so I'm all about, I love testing and tweaking and fixing and continually improving things. A lot of people don't. One of the worst things you can do is throw something up there and not even know if it's working or not and then just keep doing the same thing. I think that's probably one of the definitions of insanity. Not sure, but it feels like it is to me. So we want to always be, and the, and the one thing that I test a lot and continue to encourage people to test a lot is the ratio of content type emails to offer emails. It's different in different industries. It's different for different groups of customers. It's it's different. So we have to test it. And uh, I found it follows tends to follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 content, 80% information, 80% value to the customer, and 10 to 20% offers of your products and services. That's, that seems to apply across the board. But again, you need to test and tweak it. Maybe you can do 70-30. Maybe you can do, maybe you have to do 90-10. Maybe you have to do 95% content, 5% offers of your products and services to your customer. It depends. And you need to test with your specific audience. All right. I would love to know, what are you doing for email marketing? If you're not doing any emailing or email marketing or creating a list for your business, I would love to hear why not in the comments below so that we can learn from one another. That's it. Have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask. You can ask a question right under this video. Otherwise, I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.